Good afternoon, I'm Tiro, and this is Postmortem for Makai Toshi Saga. And in our last episode, Versus Creator, I used a little uh, game footage from here, and this is called Genocide Saga. And this is a Dojin fan game for the Saga series. Written by some guy, I don't know his name, but he did a very good job. And here it features characters from all Saga games 1 to uh, 6. And so it's uh, very fun. It's a Dojin beat em up. If you played them, if you played Ragnarok Battle offline, it's the same type of mechanics. And um, yeah, there's a lot of characters here. Like here's um, that girl from Saga 3, Robot from Saga 2, uh, Mutant from Saga 2, The Princess from Saga 3, here's Creator, Kame, which you'll see uh, eventually, Haniwa, which you'll also see, this is the War Mech equivalent uh, from one of the Saga games, here's Dion, very uh, popular from Saga 3, Fulbright, Faye, she has a uh, very nice mechanics, maybe I'll show it, um, yeah. Let's do her. And now for the loading screen. Um, basically the game is uh, six buttons. It's uh, strong, weak, um, throw, roll, and uh, taunt. And there's also a magic button which is more commonly used in other uh, Dojin games, but uh, not here. And here we go. Oh, perfect character. Yeah. Okay, when we pause, we get the character moves. Over here is my stuff, and over there is the other enemies. And here, if you can't tell, is the weapon bar. And here are the move names, but here are the uh, buttons that you're supposed to do. Like for, uh, you know, roll back, and I think this is a uh, throw. Can't do. Or down, forward, and a strong weak. And um, let's try it out. Okay, I'm doing pretty bad at this. I also like the fact that here it explains how the war mech works in uh, Final Fantasy 2. It'll make more sense later. Okay, and so that's enough of this. One moment. Okay, and here is the official site for Genocide Saga. And I'll post a link in the comments so you can get to it. And even though it's in Japanese, you can still use it because... All the page names are in English. So here's main, and here's buttons and a common operations and stuff. So let's look at the button scheme. And here we have the actual characters to play the game. So here's a magic button, which is very seldom used. Uh, weak attack, strong attack, throw, roll, taunt, and pause. Uh, let's see. Here the roll is uh, the same as if you push strong and weak together, and this is rather important because some moves require that you press these four buttons together. And that's impossible on a keyboard because it can only register four buttons at a time. So you push these four buttons and then you try to hit the arrows, it goes to like a buffer overflow. So in actuality you're supposed to press these three buttons and then use a keypad. And also I didn't demonstrate in that you have to press some combination of these buttons like two like up and down here or something and that allows your character to charge their weapon bar and elsewhere here we have the character information so it lists the moves here in a nicer name and if you understood Japanese you would explain it and it also includes uh, some of the actual square art such as you know here's the Gatling gun and grenades and the hyper cannon for the human info and there's a screenshot and here's the download page and basically just download all these files and zip them to the same uh, directory and that's it and moving on we have fantasy anime which is uh, basically RPGs that are based off of uh, more anime style things and here we have the saga series but also includes you know uh, Seiken Densu, Shining Force, and some very good uh, RPGs like Live Alive, Earthbound, Tales, Terra Enigma, 
But here's a Final Fantasy legend. And it's pretty neat in that uh, it displays the actual square art. So here's the English, you know, dungeon punk style humans and stuff. No. And over here you have the Japanese, you know, proper anime style. Human, you Oh, that's another note. Here they have the word Esper because that's what they're called in Japanese, uh, they're ESP users. So it's nice to, uh, this is a nice site to uh, browse around. And here we have the Tower Reversed, which is a site by Sarcoma, who did a very excellent and elegant job of dumping the ROM and figuring out every single thing that goes on in the game. So here's, you know, monster transformations and uh, the actual breakdown of the ROM, where's what and why. And he also wrote a program called Relic, which is a battle simulator. I haven't used the most recent version, but it's uh, very appropriate and it has like a couple of fixes, you know, like confusion is supposed to work instead of being that bug, but it's something uh, nice. And moving on. As I said before, I would show. Here's an actual scan from my notebook that I wrote. Oh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven years ago. Um, playing the game. This is a map of the skyscraper. You can kind of see it here. These little boxes with the E's stand for elevator. Boxes with dots means they're real doors. And you can kind of see this is an X potion and elixir. And here's hyper. And here's floor two, you know, here's Suzaku, the evil eye, the train. And so yeah, I wasn't cheating. Remember I, this game and I was playing in the uh, era before the internet. Well, more importantly, an era before the, yeah, before the internet, let alone broadband. So that's all I have to say for this segment. And here now we have the Wonderswan Color remake of this game. Which is where I got the very nice pictures for in the final episodes. And right here, rather quickly, is the example of why it's called the Demon Tower. As you can see, it's a very nasty little bio, you know, tech punk look towards it that you just can't get on a Game Boy. And as you can guess, you know, it has prettier colors. It fixed all the bugs in the other, or in this game, or the English version. And I believe it also has sprites for every monster in-game. So you can tell the difference between a goblin and a were-rat or zombie, ghost, and a skeleton. There is a translation project for this under Aeon Genesis, but it's kind of in limbo. And um, you can't bug them about it because that's just rather rude and you know, you can imagine how many people whining for it. Um, I try to do a little translation. Uh, for the saga to correct melee to me ray but it's rather difficult I don't know how you would do it I know exactly where to go but it's very weird so let's start this game out blah 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 paradise and to illustrate here's a zombie which I'll get I'll call him A because I can't read kanji and here at base town yay Here's our tuxedo guy. Everything is exactly the same in the game except, you know, fixes and stuff. And let's get another. See, here's a skeleton, different sprite. Yay. And I'll just show you outside because there's a little scene. We have a picture, and that, I believe, would say continent. And of course, there's one also for ocean, ruins, and sky. And so, this is just to prove the point that uh, the name of these worlds aren't pulled out of nowhere. They actually do exist, just not in the English version. And that's basically all I have to say about extras for Final Fantasy Legend. Uh, it's been a great Let's Play, and I thank you all for watching. Uh, I'm not sure what I want to do next. Everyone wants me to do like Final Fantasy Legend 2, but uh, this is a dictatorship and not a democracy, so I call the shots. And the reason I say that is uh, I've been hinting for people in the YouTube community that uh, 
I would like to maybe to do a guest uh, gameplay before this uh, for myself. And basically, the guest gameplay would be uh, Genocide Saga. You know, kind of like how they had the fighter games with, uh, I think, Shaq Fu was the most recent one. Thing is, there's no built-in networking for Genocide Saga, so I would need your guys' help to get around that. Um, I know a lot about computers, but nothing about using them, so... Oh well. So, until next time, I'm Tiro, and have fun gaming. See ya.